Hi. Hello, Daystar family. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Good morning and welcome to this week's chapel. Welcome to chapel. It is an honor to have you join us for our online chapel service. And we'd really like to send special shout outs to those of you who've been joining us in our weekly online chapel services. Thank you so much for joining us yet again. Our theme verse for this semester is Romans chapter 15, verse number 13, and it says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a very, a very strong scripture. Now, Paul, while writing to the Romans, he was encouraging them because there was a lot of persecution and uh, um, they were trying also to copy the Roman culture. And if you look at Romans chapter 12, he begins to encourage them about conf not conforming to the standards of the world, but uh, um, being transformed by the renewing of their minds. But when it comes to chapter 15, speaking about the unity of faith and the unity of the church, he's encouraging them and telling them that may the God of hope, because God is our source of hope. Even as we go through these trying moments, the whole world has come to a standstill. There is, there is a lot that is happening, the COVID issue, the pandemic. But the truth here is, the truth of God's word is that God is our source of hope. And this hope, God is able to fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in him so that we in this season may overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you look at the word hope, it is joyful and confident expectation of an eternal salvation. See, God will not just save us from COVID. There is a more greater perspective of salvation. God wants to save us from this situation and even give us eternal life. So it is something we must expect from God. Hope is an expectation that comes to our heart. This theme presents us with a great context of hope, not only in Daystar University, but also in the entire world, as we face the effects of COVID-19 pandemic. Allow me to quickly combine these thoughts with those of Exodus chapter 33, verse 13, and talk about the way ahead based on the prayer of Moses. At the moment, our institution is going through great challenges and unprecedented experiences of pain and despair. There is sadness on our faces. There is sorrow in our hearts. There is confusion in our minds, and there is fear in our conversations. There is gloom in our morale. There is anxiety lingering on our way forward. The foundations are being shaken and the question still remains, what would the righteous do? Should we pretend that we are feeling nothing? Should we pretend that nothing is happening? Should we pretend that we are not affected at all? No, not at all. Psalms 127 reminds us, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. We can rephrase this verse and say, unless the Lord builds Daystar, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over Daystar, the guards stand watch in vain. In John 15, verse 5 says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And that is the gist of our theme for this season, Jesus Christ our living hope. Think of a father who waits for the child to ask for something and they lovingly and happily give them. That's what God is doing with us. When he tells us, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be opened um, for you. And he has given us so many promises. Are you wondering how to pray about a situation? Just open your Bible and speak the promise of God uh, into your life and the Bible then en encourages us that whatever promise we speak into our lives that they are yes whatever promise is yes in Christ Jesus and I know you will agree with me that in this time in this life 
Sometimes you go through experiences, difficulties, and at times even discouragement, which at times cause us to struggle even to locate the goodness of God. I mean, we, we wonder where is God's goodness. And so as a result, we simply remain stuck, wondering why. Why are we going through all this? Why are we experiencing all what we experience in life? Questioning God. And the sad part is that we question God, but he doesn't answer us. And so we are left without hope. My encouragement for you is no matter your circumstances, God knows what we're going through. And actually, he has set a path before you that is full of hope. You'll agree with me that the Bible is filled with stories of people who went through experiences, but the Lord gave them the grace to endure, and he gave them what I'm calling the enduring hope. Their stories are all different. There's one thing that unites all of them, the enduring hope that they have in God. And so, friends, I want to share with us today on what I'm calling building an enduring hope. And so I welcome you to the reading of God's word from the book of Romans, chapter 5 and verse number 1 to verse number 5. And the Bible says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in the suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Verse number five, and hope does not disappoint because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. And so friends, we can build an enduring hope because as Christians, our enduring hope is built on, number one, the completed work of Jesus Christ. Christian hope is built on the completed work of Christ on the cross. Paul says we have been justified on the account of Jesus Christ. And justification is such a big term. And this is just being counted righteous. Our righteousness has nothing to do with us has nothing to do with what we can do for ourselves. And that is what Paul is emphasizing. That our identity in Christ is what gives us the basis for our relationship with this God. I like what Romans chapter 8 and verse number 1 says. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because... On the account of what Christ did, you and I have been counted righteous. Allow me to say that Christian hope is the conviction that God will not let us down. Our God will not let you and I down, irrespective and regardless of our experiences. And so, through Jesus Christ, friends, God is with us in every experience, in every suffering, in everything, in every season that we go through this very life. And therefore, we can build an enduring hope because we know that who we are rests on the completed work of Jesus Christ. You are a son and a daughter of the king, not on the account of where you were born or the experiences that you've gone through, but because Jesus paid the penalty for your sin. We are totally forgiven, and God has located us through his love. And therefore, friends, we can endure, we can have this enduring hope, even as we go through very many different experiences. And yet Paul is one of the people who still gives us a lot of hope, even in places where we feel the situation is hopeless. So from Paul's story, I um, got three Ps that we can get to have peace in a hopeless situation. So P number one, prayer. Prayer and praise. And again, we had Paul and Silas. Remember the story of Paul and Silas in prison? The second P is partners. You need partners. Every time you're in a hopeless situation, you need people who can pray with you, who can stand with you. You need people like counselors who can help you. And even us right now here, we are here to partner with you, whatever you're going through. Again, another story of another uh, person, this time not Paul, but Peter. And Peter was in 
prison again. And while he was in prison, uh, in Acts 12, 5 to 7, the people of God were praying for him separately um, in a room. And so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone, or shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. So, and when Peter was released, he went to where the people were praying and they could not even believe it was him. So when you have people praying for you, when you have partners to help you, it can help you through a hopeless situation. P number three, the last three, uh, the last P is patience. And Paul writes to us again and he says in Romans 8, 24 to 25, for in this hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Probably we are wondering, for example, when is COVID going to end? When are we going to come back to school? When are things going to come back to normal? When are you going to have enough school fees to probably afford to come back to school? Let's be patient. Let's wait on God. Psalms 40 verse 1 to 3 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. And this is my prayer for you. It doesn't matter what hopeless situation you're going through right now, that God will put you on that rock and give you a firm place to stand. He will put a new song in your mouth, a hymn of praise to our God, and that many people will see. And while they were thinking you are not going to make it through that hopeless situation, they will have a reason to rejoice and trust in God because of the testimony that they see in your life. Joseph had amazing loyalty and faith in God. And because of that, his hope in God was very strong. And Joseph remained faithful. And as we go through many pits in life, you must know that it is not somebody's creation. Fulani amenipangia haya. Fulani ameniendea kwa waganga. Fulani ananichukia. That is God's blueprint for you in your life and there are pits that are supposed to strengthen your hope and faith in God. And our message, our running message has been hope as a foundation. And what an example from Joseph. And when Pontifar's wife put it that Joseph had tried to rape her, Joseph was thrown in prison. Again, I'm talking about the blueprint of God. It was not about Pontifar throwing Joseph into the prison. It was God's intention to amplify his presence in the life of Joseph. And while in prison, he also had other prisoners. We know one of them was the butler, and the other one was the baker of the pharaoh, who had annoyed the pharaoh, and he had thrown them in prison. And uh, they came up one morning saying, we have had terrible dreams. And we know Joseph gave the interpretation. One, he said, you will be recalled back as the butler to serve the king with his drinking cup. The other one, Joseph predicted, you will die. Was it about Joseph? The answer is no. It was about the blueprint God had created for Joseph. I want to share from my heart words from Psalm 20 that I'm going to read as I make this prayer for you uh, and the entire community as a brother and a friend and an alumnus of this university. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. 
May he send you help from the sanctuary. May he grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. I'll read verse 4 again. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Many of you have got so many things that you desire in life. You've got dreams and aspirations and probably you're still discovering yourself and probably even those who are on staff, whatever function that you do at the community, sometimes you're not sure about what happens or what's, what's ahead um, in life. Uh, I know that God has a way of granting the desire of your heart in his own time. He makes all things beautiful. And I want to finish this with verse 5, that after God has answered us, we will shout for joy when you are victorious and we lift up your banners, our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. That's my prayer for you and may God indeed continue blessing you. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning into Online Chapel. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you're blessed. Indeed. It is always a pleasure to have you join us. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on our various social media platforms. That is on YouTube at Daystar University Live. On Instagram at Daystar Christian Fellowship. On Facebook at Daystar Christian Fellowship. And on Twitter at Daystar underscore DCS. And that brings us to the end of a beautiful chapel session. Let's do this again next week. And until next time, bye. Bye. God, God bless, bless you. you. God bless you. God, God bless, bless you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, for now, it's a wrap.